The following film illustrates the main stages for the assembly of an aluminium alloy Helios lift shaft structure. The example shown is an outdoor installation on an existing building for a two-stop platform lift with one side access. Before installation can begin, the pit or base must be constructed and the building works necessary to create the access points must be completed. Before starting installation, check the contents of the kit against the packing list. The manual and design drawings in the kit provide useful reference during installation. The first step is to place the feet on the bottom of the pit. Once the square nuts that will be used to secure the crossbeam have been fitted into the grooves on the uprights, the uprights are fitted onto the sleeves on the feet. The next operation is to fit the hammerhead bolts into the slot provided on the uprights. Then fit the flat washer and the M10 nut. Tighten the nut firmly with a maximum torque of 30 Newton meters. Now it is time to build the first ring at the bottom of the pit. Place the threshold crossbeam at the correct height and secure it to the upright using the single bracket. This bracket must be fixed to the upright using the countersunk bolts and square nuts already fitted and to the crossbeam using the same type of bolt and nut. In this example, we are using the special 60 mm thick crossbeam for a pit of less than 120 mm deep. The ring is completed by continuing the same procedure, also using the double brackets. Tighten the nuts with a maximum torque of 20 Newton meters. Before installing the next ring, the glass support profiles should be fitted to act as a guide for the height at which the upper cross beam should be installed. Place the plastic clips inside the seat on the upright. If necessary, open the clips out by hand to prevent them from sliding down towards the lower crossbeam. Press the glass holding profile onto the uprights until it snaps into place. The operation described for the ring in the bottom of the pit is then repeated for all the following rings in the first few segments. Before continuing with the installation, refer to the technical drawing to check the length of the upright segments to be used. To connect the following uprights, use the sleeve, which must be secured at both ends with two hammerhead bolts, washers and nuts, which must be tightened to up to 30 Newton meter. First check whether one or more square nuts need to be fitted into the seat on the uprights, ready to fix cross beams in line with the upright upright joint. Then continue assembling the structure until completed. Before the structure is made perpendicular and anchored permanently, the bracing crossbar should be fitted at the top. Assemble the four kits and fix them to the uprights. Cut the threaded bars to the correct size, leaving the necessary extra length. Position the bars and use the nuts provided to adjust the structure's components so that they are perpendicular. Now it is time to set the structure vertical and secure it in its final position by fitting four expansion plugs onto the pit bottom feet. Please note that the telescopic feet adjustment must only be used for temporary positioning of the structure. Before securing it in its final position on the bottom of the pit, the feet must be fully retracted and shims must be positioned to provide the proper support. Continue fixing the structure by fitting the two anchor plugs used to secure it to the landing to the threshold crossbeam close to the uprights. These can be either expansion or chemical plugs, depending on the substrate. In the installation shown here, the top of the shaft is secured to the eaves, which are about 10 centimeters away, by means of a special push-pull kit, costing of a threaded bar with chemical expansion plug and counter tube. The shaft is secured using the method already described. If required for the specific installation, a variety of structural reinforcement options are available. 
including struts, crossbars, and bracing beams. On the installation shown here, a special telescopic tie is used to secure the free rear uprights. After making the necessary holes in the uprights, assemble the two parts, position the tie at the specified height, and secure it to the structure using the set of metal fasteners provided. Once the telescopic ends have been adjusted, fixing to the building is completed using expansion or chemical anchor plugs as is suitable. A mounting plate system is also available upon request. The shaft is now vertical, perpendicular and permanently secured to its base and the building. The roof structure is delivered pre-assembled. To fit it correctly, first insert the hammerhead bolts into the holes provided on the wings, solidly mounted on the underside of the roof. Then fit the roof, making certain that it slopes in the right direction. Fit the heads of the bolts into the seats provided on the end cross beams. Then tighten the nuts to a maximum torque of 30 Newton meter. Before installing the elevator, the drive system side enclosure panels should be mounted to avoid any possible interference with the travelways and the mechanical components. This is not compulsory, however, and different strategies may be preferred on a case-by-case -case basis. One distinctive feature of all Donzelli lift shaft structures is that all enclosure panels and accessories are installed within the shaft itself. A particularly important factor when shafts are positioned indoors next to staircases. The sequence shown is used to install a blind panel flush with the outside of the shaft at the bottom of the structure. Fit the blind or glass panel Fit the seal, supplied on reel, onto the snap-on glass holder profile and use the profile to secure the panel on all four sides. Follow exactly the same procedure to fit the other enclosing panels in the other openings on the drive system side. The drive system can now be installed. Before the floor doors are installed, the special threshold holder profiles must be fixed to the cross beams using self-threading screws. Then fit the lift doors. Once the doors have been fitted, all the other shaft enclosure panels can be installed. Following as an example, we show the installation of an overdoor glass panel, flush with the inside edge of the shaft structure. All Donzelli lift shaft structures are single clad. This means double cladding is not required. In addition, the Helios model shown here is fitted with a special reversible glass holder profile which allows the enclosing panel to be fitted flush with the inside or outside of the shaft. Fit the glass holding strip fitted with the seal and position the glass. It must be inserted fully onto the lips in the uprights and then secured with the snap-on strips. On request, snap-on strips can be fitted on all cross beams, even for glass panels fitted flush with the outside of the shaft, and special wiring raceway guards can also be provided for the uprights. At this point, complete assembly of the structure by fixing the landing door side panels, shown here on two sides, to the door frame and structure uprights with self-threading screws. It is important to bear in mind that these panels are not structural elements that support the doors. The doors must be suitably connected to the structure cross beams. Installation of the frame is now complete and assembly of the lift can be completed. The Helios model is available in various finishes, with which different types of glass can be combined. Following are some examples. Natural anodized finish and clear glass the entire RAL range is available. Here is a solution with the shaft structure in RAL 8016 and bronze colored glass. And a RAL 3001 structure with milk white glass. The new silver polish finish here with stop sole reflective glass. A conservative estimate for the assembly times of the shaft shown is two days for assembling the structure, setting it vertical and fixing it, plus an additional two days to fit the enclosure panels and door side panels. 
The basic assembly team requires two people. 